In today's episode of the Motorhome Matt podcast, we're unpacking whims. What? Whims. Mm. Whims, yeah, W I M S. And what it is and why you need to know about them. In the news, there's a trial of new technology being used by the police. And we answer your questions on solar panels and insurance companies that cover punctures. Welcome to the Motorhome Map Podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Industry insights, expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and camper vans. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Remember, please do follow on your favourite podcast app. Or if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe and the little bell. Brought to you by arabasecreative.co.uk. Straight into the news in this week's podcast. A trial of new mobile technology which can automatically detect motorists who are not wearing a seatbelt or using mobile phones while driving is being extended with police across the country taking part. Yeah, research shows that you are four times more likely to be in a crash if you use your phone while driving and twice as likely to die in a crash if you don't wear a seatbelt. Plain fact of the matter is you shouldn't be using a mobile phone uh, when you're driving. It's against the law yeah. and you heard the stats there from Matt. It's not big and it's not clever, but people still insist on doing it. And I believe the police are using AI, artificial intelligence, in order to de-blur pictures. I know there's certainly one on an overbridge on the M5 between Exeter and Plymouth that does just that. Oh, wow, interesting. I know it was on the news, local news last night that the police were out in force in unmarked cars uh, and a hotspot for mobile phone use. I'm not quite sure why there is a hotspot for mobile phone use. Perhaps it was a commuter route. And they were pulling lots of drivers who were on their phone whilst they were driving at the wheel. Um, so, yeah, just don't do it. I, we all know not to do it, but it's too easy, isn't it? You shouldn't touch the phone at all while you're driving, but the temptation's always there. Even to use your sat-nav, shouldn't be doing it. No, uh, you're right. I mean, people pick the phone up and say, I was looking at the uh, at the sat-nav for Ossifer, but it's, you know, it costs £5 to buy one of those little clamps that you can uh, put on the dashboard or windscreen in order to uh, put the mobile phone in there while you're using the sat-nav. Yeah, yeah, better still just hide it in the glove box and use a hands-free kit. Um, just put it away. You know, the call will wait. They'll ring you back or you can ring them later. Uh, but it's easier said than done, isn't it? We, you know, I've done it and we've all done it. It's an emergency moment. You need to take that call. It's too easy done. But yeah, the police are out to watch you. When was the last time you turned off your mobile phone? Actually switched it off and then left it somewhere and walked away from it. I don't mean turn it off when something didn't work properly and turn it off and on again. Well, you don't mean a reboot. Well, no. I actually turned it off. Turn and it off and left it behind. That's a really good question. Really good question. It's ridiculous. We've become attached to these things. Yeah, they're like a rite of passage. Mine's off now when we record this. Maddie takes it off me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed it anywhere on my person. So, yeah, it is off right now. We are going up to the Outer Hebrides. Did I tell you that? You Good. did, yes, you mentioned it more than once. <laughs> and uh, we will take phones with us, but they are going to be switched off for periods of that trip. We just need a disconnect. It's going to be good. I just think we, we, we I once went years and years ago to a, a business conference in Nashville in Tennessee. All oh, right, you missed a flex. Uh, I thought you were uh, going to say, uh, say straight. Yeehaw. <laughs> and there was one guy uh, speaking there and he was talking about emails. And I think this applies to mobile phones as well. And, and it was in the days when emails were really taking off, you know, the late 1990s. He says, don't reply to emails when they drop. Just check them three times a day. And if somebody rings you or stops you and says, did you see my email? Say, no, I haven't read them yet. He said, people are shocked, but it works. And I think the same goes for mobile phones. Let's leave them behind. We don't need them all the time. I pick my phone up. The first thing I was check, I check. Or oh, is a little number one there. What, e what email have I got? And it's, you know, something I don't need. No, it's true. We're not in your retirement. <laughs> Most things are wait, <laughs> including you. <laughs> OK, so just be warned, the police are out, they're about, and they're extending uh, the long arm of the law. Very soon, they're going to have trained octopus by the side of the road, uh, which actually reaches into your car window, takes your wallet out, removes 20 quid, and then lets you go on your way. But it gives you a little tickle. Welcome to the 21st century. Progress, they call it. <laughs> 
Matt, I saw you mention something without me last week. There was an empty chair. We've got a new sponsor. We do indeed. Yes, we're delighted to welcome Ripe to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I've already shared some of my mystery shopper story with them, so I thought I'd share some of the features that stood out for me. Now, they're an insurance company and they offer breakdown cover as an optional add-on. There's no limitation on the size of the vehicle, unlike some competitors. However, there is a weight restriction of up to seven and a half tonnes. Their minimum age they'll insure is 25 well there's 30 for some vehicles such as american rv and a classes with an age cap as high as 80 now ripe will allow accrued no claims bonuses to be transferred from a car or motorcycle to a camper van provided the previous vehicle is no longer insured and you have use of a vehicle other than a motorhome to find out more about ripe head to the link in the description of this episode where a 10 percent discount will be applied to your premium or give them a call and quote the phrase motorhome matt it's the product of the week time with that leisure shop.com what have we got today oh you're gonna love this keith really i'm gonna reach under the table brace yourself i'm bracing myself i'm <laughs> clinging on my knuckles are white <laughs> This is a collection of Leeds Little Brackets. Now, if you own an Adria Twin, there's a sliding door on the side with a fly screen that regularly pops out of the bottom runner. Uh, We've just taken delivery of hundreds of these. And this little bracket screws onto that bottom runner and it will never come off the track again. I speak first-hand experience. We've got one on our Adria Twin. Absolute must-have. Brilliant. So if you've got an Adria twin and your fly screen is flapping around, this <laughs> cures it once and for all. It does. Why don't Adria fit them from new? That's the question. Don't tell them because, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, we keep them in stock. We do send them out by DHL. And we've been chastised for that in the past because even at eight quid, we're not covering the cost of the shipping. Uh, it's, it barely covers it. But they rarely lose them. Whereas we post them with our dear old Royal Mail, we've had loads go missing. So, yeah. Yeah, if you've got an Adria Twin, then or a, or a Sun Living V Series van, you need one of these. So you know, go on that leisure shop and search for Adria Twin. You'll find all our spare parts for Adria Twins on there. Fantastic! So that cures your fly screen. It's the Motorhome Map Podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. It's all brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Let's talk about whims. Let's have a whim, shall we? What's a whim? What's, What's a, a whim, whim Matt? <laughs> so the whim we're talking about today is the weight in motion sensor. Oh. Have you heard of these? No, I never have. But I bet I've seen them. So they are designed to catch vehicles that are travelling on the main road network overweight. And it's two wires on the ground and a camera. And they will pick up the vehicle registration and they will know the weight of it and report you if you're running overweight. So they're aimed at lorries, but... To me, this could mean that motorhomers are at risk if you're driving a fat motorhome, sorry, an overweight motorhome. (laughs) So it's a a question of enforcement. You shouldn't be driving uh, overloaded, but sometimes you might be. So this is two wires on the ground. I always just thought they were there, you know, with the box by the side of the road just to either count the cars, you know, for the councils or something. Well, there's thousands of this bit of kit around. I guess they've adopted it for this purpose. So they've been used to count traffic in a lane uh, to how much traffic is moving in or out of a road area uh, and also for speed Um, so they've been used to detect speed as well as the vehicles pass over them but now they're being used to detect weight so really clever I wanted to find out a bit more about it so at the recent show in Birmingham I spoke to our dear friend Tim Booth Tim is the leisure vehicles officer at the National Vehicle Crime Intelligence Service He's like a modern-day Sherlock Holmes. So if your caravan or motorhome is nicked, then it's probably going to cross Tim's desk. Uh, and I asked him to explain a little bit more about whims. Oh, I know exactly. Lots of little whims. Yeah, the whims you're talking about is the uh, weight in motion sensors. And I don't think people realise how clever a system it is and how easily they could fall, let's say, victim of that particular system. So just explain for our listeners, how does it work? Right, WIMS is actually a weight in motion sensor and those are a bit more of a dinosaur. Remember that police speed checks used to be two wires across the road and the speed when you went across them gave the speed and you may get a ticket. Technology has moved on a lot. If you go through a lot of the areas on the strategic road network now, you will see two wires buried in the road, sometimes more than two. 
They are not speed checks now. They are your WIMS system. And what they can do is they can work out what the vehicle is that's just gone over, check it against the DVLA record, which tells them what that vehicle should weigh. If it's gone overweight, you may then be issued a notice in the, uh, in the post for having um, contravened um, the weight limit on your vehicle. So inside those two wires are some sensors that are actually weighing the vehicle as it crosses over them at 70 mile an hour. I'm not going into the detail of the tech of it because I'm not, I've not played with it. But what it does, it will tell the system how much the vehicle weighed when it went over that checkpoint in the road, signals the camera to take an image of the vehicle registration number. If you look at your V5, you'll see on that that all the weights are very clear on your V5 as to what it should be. If it's in excess of that, you may then be subject um, to a a penalty for enforcement. I mean, we've discussed um, at caravan shows um, carrying out checks on leisure vehicles, uh, particularly the M5, which is a major route that we often manage, and the number of overweight vehicles on there is quite significant, but, but falls into two categories. The southbound is people who are taking their shopping from the northeast on their holidays to Cornwall and Devon. For some reason, they don't believe supermarkets have moved into there yet, but we give them that advice and ask them to support local industry. Northbound, we find most vehicles are, are overweight. It's because they've got cases and cases of wine from France. Ah. So just to be in one location and just across the motorway, very different demographic of uh, reason for, uh, for why the vehicles are overweight. So is it beer from the north, wine from the south? Is that what you're saying? Something like that. Okay. And, um, and you know, some of these are a ton overweight. Whoa. And I know you'll be really, really annoyed with me, but what I'm going to tell you now is all that weight on cars and caravans and trailers is not healthy because the tyres can only carry so much of a loading. If you overload them and they go bang, then you've got serious problems. It will spill the wine as well, of course. Um, well, that would be more upsetting for me than blowing with tyres, I'll be honest. So the key things with these whims, though, they're designed for HGVs. Are, they, are motorhomes being monitored? Yeah. Um, Definitively, I can't say. I mean, they'll be very busy with the, uh, with the, with the um, HGV product that's going through. But your larger motorhomes, once they realise, or DBSA realise, that um, uh, conditions are not being met, let's say, to comply with weights, they will see that as um, something they need to enforce for the whole project, which is of safer roads. So as a motorhome driver, then, we could have our weight monitored in motion by this system and we would get a fine in the post? You get a notice through the post and depending on the percentage of overweight they decide it's going to be fine or not because they will have a criteria they work to. I don't know what that criteria is so it wouldn't be fair for me to say but as I've said the risks is not just about getting a ticket the risk is about you know the dangers you're creating for yourself by overloading a vehicle that's not designed to carry that overloading. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And this, the, the introduction of this might be a reason why people start checking that. Yeah. And where are these whims? How can we find out where they are? Um, like most speed cameras, if you go online and look for planning applications, wherever they're put up, there, ha- there has to be an application for them to be installed. But if you're a diligent motorist, when you're driving around, you'll see them. And there's an increasing number of them, certainly around the M25, isn't there? Yeah. M25 and the ferry routes, well, I mean, obviously routes to ferries will be monitored because uh, of the significant damage overweight HGVs cause to our road structure. Um, you, know, you go into Europe and, and compare their roads and you look at our roads, our roads are being absolutely shattered in places. Mm. They've got to do something about it and that's a way they can do it automatically and they can find the haulage operators for the uh, significant overweights. Brilliant. Tim Booth, thank you so much for your insights. As always... That's Tim Booth, the Leisure Vehicles Officer at NAVSIS, the National Vehicle Crime Intelligence Police Service. Interesting what he's got to say there and how technology, how much technology is in our everyday lives when we're driving. Yeah, absolutely. You see all these cameras and sensors at the side of the road. Well, if you see this kit, that is what it is. So be mindful, if you are overweight, um, you could get caught. So No, 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 not if you're overweight. If your motorhome is, oh, oh, yeah. you've loaded it with too much. Yeah, but you could be the reason your motorhome's overweight, Keith. Not if, not if you're a bloater. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you got a fat motel. Yeah. Just, you know, does my bum look big in this? It's not about you. It's about your motel. Does my bumper look big in this? So, so how is this going to affect us then? If you are driving over the permissible weight of your motel, the gross weight, you could get caught on one of these cameras. Yes, there's, as Tim says, they are aimed at HGV lorry drivers, but there's no reason why... The, you know, the authorities could tune in to motorhomes, particularly on the ferry routes or on tourism routes. We're an easy win, I think, and it's a good revenue generator. So just be mindful. Know what your gross weight is. If you're worried, go and weigh the motorhome. Honestly, it costs a fiver. Go to a local weigh bridge uh, and go and get weighed and really understand what your front and rear axle weights are and what your gross weight is. We talk about it a lot, but it is important. And easy for people who are new uh, to the pastime, isn't it? Uh, just not not to think about it and uh, get their sums wrong. Uh, we're yeah. not saying that the police are coming after motorhomes. Just let's be very clear on that. It is designed for heavy goods vehicles. But Matt is saying that the technology is now there and you are subject to weight limits and uh, it could be used to enforce those limits with yeah. you. It's all about your safety as well. So if you, the heavier you are, the longer the vehicle is going to take to stop. Uh, so you know it's going to increase your stopping distance. So just be mindful of that. You've got to take your safety seriously. Uh, so not being overweight means you're going to stay safe and stay on the right side of the law as well. Not you being overweight. Not... not no, it's not a pro Weight Watchers podcast. P pudgy, not you, fatty. <laughs> pudgy. <laughs> I'm fat shaming now. I'm not allowed to do that anymore, am I? No. <laughs> no you can't fat shame. You go, hey, fatty. You've lost quite a lot of weight, though. I have, yeah. How did yeah. you do that? Yeah, uh, starving. I starved myself. <laughs> you don't pay me enough. <laughs> it's really quite simple. I see. Yeah, it's under the stairs there. You know when you you know when you push through the cheese on toast, the cheese all comes off the top, <laughs> stays outside. <laughs> yeah, thanks. That's why we call you Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheesy Kevin. <laughs> More about that a little bit later on. It's the Motorhome Matt Podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. It is time for some of our Q&A questions and answers. Neil is in York and he says, Hi Matt, I've been looking at buying some solar panels for our motorhome as we want to stay off grid for longer. I've managed to upgrade to a lithium battery. However, because it's a retrofit, the solar panels have to fit around existing hardware on the roof. I haven't been able to find any panels with a good wattage over 400 watts that fit the available space on the motorhome slash van solar websites however i have found panels on websites for residential solar panels that are a perfect fit is there any reason i can't use these panels on our motorhome mm. the specifications suggest it should be fine including weight thanks and he's enjoying the podcast this is right up your street this one you're a solar panel fan aren't you on my roof at home fantastic you're obsessed no but i wouldn't say obsessed but yes it's, it's passing interest <laughs> You're one of those people, aren't you? You're an evangelist for solar at home. I love it. So you're absolutely right, Neil. You could use these uh, domestic solar panels on a motorhome. There's no reason why not. The key considerations are output voltage and weight. Uh, and I've actually spoken to Neil on a message since. Uh, and he's confirmed that the voltage output is, I think it's 48 volts. Uh, the weight was good as well. Uh, they're made in Germany, not in China. We're seeing reports of an increasing number of solar panels catching fire, uh, which are cheap ones from China um, and just not made to the grade. Um, I did actually, though, for your own peace of mind, I checked with an expert at Bluefix, a chap called Mark, very helpful, very, very knowledgeable about solar and lithium. And I did check your question with Mark, and he said the same. Yeah, be absolutely fine. Check the voltage and be mindful of the weight. So, Neil, I'd say go for it. I can totally understand the problem you're faced with trying to fit solar panels on a roof. We've got the same problem, as I mentioned before, on our Adria Twin. There isn't much room to put a decent-sized solar panel. So I'm actually going to follow your example, and thanks for the tip, and go and look at some residential ones and see if I can get a bigger one that will fill the space. I've got a question. I are the way they are fixed any different if you buy ones which are specifically uh, for putting on, on vehicles rather than ones for, yeah. the, for the houses that's a good question they could be um, but as long as they can be bonded onto the roof safely and you use the right cable gland through the roof so you're not going to allow any water ingress then you'll be fine and um, but um, if you're doing solar panel stuff and you're not you know you're trying to do it yourself remember it's direct current it, it's the one that really 
can blow the top of your head off, right? Goes bang, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you're not sure, get them professionally installed, absolutely. definitely. Yeah. Especially if you start drilling the roof of your van, you could end up in a world of pain with water ingress and all sorts. So if you're not sure, get them professionally installed. Another question here from Malkin Lincoln. He says, do you know of any insurance companies that cover you for punctures, considering lots of motorhomes are not having a spare due to the weight? We're travelling around Europe for two months and it's concerning us. Presently with Caravan Guard and they do not cover punctures. Yes, for recovery to a local garage, though. The again partnership with Green Flag would, but you have to take a separate policy out for punctures. Would have liked it all in one. Well, mm. I'm, to be honest, with you man you know the insurance companies decide what products they're going to sell you and if it's an add-on it's an add-on yeah absolutely i don't i don't know an answer to this definitively i'm afraid um, we have a puncture or tire policy here for our, our hire business at motorhome holiday company and it's a service from a tire company that will come out and respond to a puncture on any vehicle here um, owned by the company uh, and they'll replace the tyre at the side of the road and I have to say they're really quick um, it's quite expensive but they are really good 24-7 cover you remember a little while ago I waited 15 hours for the breakdown service to come out to me um, I've never had an experience like that with them they are really really good uh, so I think if you found a policy that will cover it that's going to be your option you're quite right as well I did check with Caravan Guard they don't offer this as a bolt-on so I think you are going to have it as a an extra policy that you're going to have to pay for. Um, I don't actually know anyone who's ever asked for one of this, a service like this. Yeah, well, it's an interesting question. I mean, it hasn't even crossed my mind. I mean, when you get a puncture, you, you know, you either put a spare or get your home or one of those uh, aerosol cans which fill fill the the, the punctured uh, well, tire with, with with some sort of funny hard. I wonder. Substance. If, I wonder if it, with such a policy like there's a cap. On how many times you can claim. Yeah. So I've just lent our VW T6 to a colleague so he can move house. He said, I'll look after it. I said, yeah, please do. I know you will. It's our family car. 20 minutes later, he rings. Matt, I've got a problem. He's driven through a pothole, ripped the front tyre off and ruined the alloy. <laughs> Cracked it. Uh, a right mess. So the spare wheel goes on. I've just had to buy a new front alloy and new tyre. I bought two tyres for the front because they were both actually getting quite low. Uh, and then in waiting for the alloy wheel to arrive, I get a puncture in my spare. Unbelievable. And then... True story, on the way to get the alloy wheel fitted and the brand new tyre put on it, I get a puncture in the other tyre on the front. Blooming brand new. You should move uh, from away from your know, neighbour to that nail factory, <laughs> aren't you? I think there's a neighbour throwing screws in the road in front of my car. <laughs> I think I've upset someone. I couldn't believe it. Honestly, potholes and nails in the road. Hate them. Potholes around by us are terrible at the moment. But that's why this whims thing, actually, this is quite topical. Uh, because the uh, haulage firms that are overweight are part of the problem causing all these potholes. And the local authorities are actually billing the haulage companies for repairs to the road. So there you are. Review at Mallard126 says, as new owners of a motorhome, we found these podcasts excellent. They're extremely professional, loads of useful information, and are presented in a wonderful, light-hearted style. Oh, what a great review. Hey you, sure listen, you sure you listen to the right podcast? I'll carry on. <laughs> the banter and friendlessness between Matt and Kevin... <laughs> Kevin works so well and makes the episodes entertaining as well as informative. Drink the AI wrote that. The yeah. banter and friendlessness. Let's just stop there for a minute. Yeah. The friendlessness. Between Matt and Kevin. Who's Kevin? <laughs> Mallard126 we think we know what you meant the friendliness and Matt and Chris <laughs> yeah that's the one <laughs> yeah thanks thanks a lot uh, for that particular review oh, and by the way you know we want you to record some questions for it. we want to hear your voice now when you go online and do it don't worry about it you can redo it you can do two or three versions if you am an hour in the middle or leave gaps we can close it up and edit it for you but we really do want to hear your voice so, uh, go online and we're going to give you the address in just a moment's time record your question uh, we'll do the rest for you and you will be a star here on the motorhome matt podcast a star kevin and chris kevin and chris <laughs> you can join the friendlessness <laughs> you can so if you want to leave us a review what do they do then matt uh, to leave a review go to mhmp.info forward slash review to ask a question 
Should we do that? mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. That's one word, ask Matt. And see MHMP Motorhome Matt Podcast? That's the easy way to remember We it. get it. We and get you it. can subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, make sure you do. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little thumb and the bell. Uh, and the bell will tell you when a new episode is released. And our YouTube channel is sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. Kevin and Chris, you can come out the cupboard right now. <laughs> He's under the stairs. With me cheese on toast. With his cheese-less toast. (laughs)